um, we are in a relationship, we are married. So yeah, I mean, I guess we're basically, since we're married, we're basically experts on relationships, right? That's how that works. No, I don't think anyone is an expert in relationships. Um, it's just a learning process and everyone isn't perfect. We're not perfect human beings, spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter even if it's romantic or non-romantic relationships. Um, people are flawed and that translates into our relationships. So Absolutely. And speaking of being imperfect, I mean, this podcast itself is going to be imperfect. This is we, we, we did actually years ago try and record a podcast of us, just an audio podcast. It was you and I. Do you remember that? I do remember that. It started and stopped very quickly. <laughs> yeah, we never released that. We did a whole episode. We never released an episode. And it's funny, too, because we were talking about um, cultural differences in relationships we yes. have cultural differences. And basically at the time we said, oh, that's kind of totally irrelevant. It, it doesn't affect our relationship at all. And I don't think that's true in our experience um, now in any way. I think it does. It's not like the number one thing, but it does affect um, things. But yeah, I mean, no relationship is perfect. And so we are not coming at this as experts. We're basically just kind of saying like, hey, this is just two people talking about thing. And if you find that interesting, good for you and um but we've just been kind of thinking and talking a lot lately about how we've kind of noticed like you know we're very blessed and not to sound like an obnoxious married couple that but like we're very blessed to be in the position that we're in um as a married couple not out on the dating scene because we look at our single friends we look at the 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 people around us and we say like man like it is it is a complicated landscape out there for people yeah. who are single. It's really like, uh, like our heart goes Especially out. Especially now with kind of the dating landscape where there's a lot of like online dating. Um, you know, like a lot of people are even starting the dating process before they actually like see the person in in real life or in person. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, a lot of times I think when you're online um, and chatting with someone, you can try to create for yourself, you know, a persona that you might not actually be. Mm -hmm. So I think that can sometimes lead to disappointment when you meet the person, you know, in real life and you get to see all the nuances that you're missing when you're just chatting with them online. So it's definitely... Um, a hard thing to get into i would say yeah and i don't really know like like putting my like putting my experience out there in front as as a christian you know just even just pragmatically speaking this is not even a theological statement um but like just pragmatically speaking as a christian it it's much easier to in one sense to find people um that at least share your basic values by going to church kind right. of thing. You know, I mean, even just going to church as a Christian doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to find a solid person. There's there's toxic people everywhere, um, inside, outside, uh, all that kind of stuff. And so, uh, but I feel like, I mean, that's where we met. We met in church right. at, through through a mutual friend. And I feel like that's the the ideal situation if anyone can find it is through i you know because there's a there's a certain trust there's a certain that kind of thing and then we got to know each other and all that kind of thing um but yeah i mean how do you find a non-toxic relationship in 2023 i mean we're not looking for one because we're we we have it so it's in one sense we are the least qualified people to talk about this the more that i think about it because uh you know yeah i think it's just kind of um, for us, like piecing together what we're hearing from our single friends or for people who are out dating and so forth, their experiences. And I think that's kind of shaping what we would think of finding a non-toxic relationship. Yeah. Um, I mean, that being said, like I know like online dating has been successful for some people. Sure. Some people have been able to find like amazing partners with them. But then we've also heard the other side of things where it's just not great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think too, like even for like, again, specifically where we're, we're Christian. And so we have a lot of friends who are Christian and we think from that context. And I think like even like on, you know, what I've heard lots of times too, like, 
somebody might be on like a Christian dating site and they're coming across people there and it's like they're the way that they are are speaking or approaching dating is is not really in a Christian way, even though it's on even though that's where they uh, met them, you know, through a Christian supposedly through a Christian source. And I really feel like my thoughts have been my 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 hot take on this is that more people need to be meeting people in healthy community. And so as a Christian, I see that in in church. I think a lot of people um, post-pandemic have stopped going to church uh, through the pandemic, through after the pandemic. A lot of people have stopped going to church, just period. And so um, for various reasons, and so for for, for a lot of Christians, I, I hear this over and over again. This is not unique. If you thought this was unique to your congregation as you're listening, this is not unique to your congregation. I've heard this so many times where people are going in there like, yeah, like I want to, I'd love to meet like another person my age that's single in my church, but there literally aren't any. They're all either seniors or they're little kids or they're, you know, couples that just had kids and that kind of thing. But all the, all the young singles are, are not, no young singles in your area kind of thing. You know what I mean? And, um, but I really think Christian or not, like the best way is that people need to get back into community. And I feel like throughout the pandemic, yeah, people I, lost community. Right. And um, yeah, we're not just talking. I mean, obviously we come from this from a Christian lens, but, you know, that applies the same thing too for for people who aren't Christians, you know, getting yourself in the community. Um, and as you get to know people in the community, um you know, likewise, they can point you to other person, other people who are single and kind of indirectly by knowing that person who introduced you, the other person, like there is a sense of accountability because you know it's not just you coming at it from the puppy dog phase where you're like, wow, this person is so amazing, but you get kind of almost a second hand of like other people who've had experiences with them too mm-hmm. and, and how that was like. Yeah, because you, yeah, exa- exactly. And you have that people can see, have seen that person. They've seen you. They know the, they know the part of you that you're going to put your best foot forward and the part of that person that's going to put their best foot forward. But they also know the part of you and the part of that person that you're probably not showing to that person. Yeah. And they also know whether or not, you know, they're not going to get everything right as well. They're just people as well. But they can help you, guide you in that process to go like, Maybe these people are a good match or they're not a good match. And right. here's why. And here's what you might not have um, considered kind of thing, you know. And so I think, yeah, it's just people have moved away from community in general. Uh, people don't, you know, people don't talk to their neighbors much these days. People don't um, have, and I like, uh, you know, like, I don't know where people are going for community these days. And if they, and I think a lot of people aren't. A lot of people are very lonely. That's why there's a lot, not the only reason, but I think that affects a lot of mental health stuff that's going on right now too, where yeah, people are very, sure. very isolated and lonely. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think people just need to get back into community, whether it's joining, joining, a, you know, a basketball league, a mixed basketball mm-hmm. league, whether it's join, you know, uh, going to church, whether it's um, joining other kinds of community type of groups that could be out there in some way, yeah. get in community and not just don't just get in com- community to like hunt for singles, but yeah. like get in community just to be with people. It's just good for just like there's so many studies that talk about the benefits of being right. in community, you know. And I mean, unfortunately, like or I guess not really unfortunately, but basically, if you want a relationship that is non-toxic or um is more than just like surface level like you have to put in the work to do that like Mm -hmm. you can't just be passive and just expect to like you know the right person to just drop into your lap i mean sometimes it does happen pretty rarely but you know like it's just putting in that work and whatever you put the work that you put out like you'll get back as to the quality of people that you're meeting. Um, And obviously nowadays, like it's so easy for us to find surface relationships. Like you can go online to any chat group and you can, you know, chat with people about 
I don't know, like the sports or your favorite team or so forth, but getting into more of those deeper relationships where um, it's not just all about yourself, where, Mm. you know, it's just like getting to know what is important to the person that you're chatting to and kind of where you're talking about deeper stuff like your values and how you align. Um, That takes work and that takes time. So Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, being willing to, get to the place where you are going to, you know, put in the work to get to know people And I think, I think that what you just highlighted on about values and that kind of thing is really important to values, beliefs and things. And like, in a way, you know, I'm, I might backpedal this. We'll see. We'll see. But I think in a way, I almost think you shouldn't get into a relationship if you haven't established what your idea of beliefs and values are. Um, because like, my opinion is that people oftentimes in relationships overemphasize um, common interests and underestimate the importance of shared values and shared beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so maybe they do, they're looking for community and they join the basketball league and like, Oh, we both love basketball. And so, you know, that's our, that's our thing we got, you know, and then they have the, 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 the cute sports, a wedding in a in a basketball what do you what arena that's not the right word we call it basketball court sorry <laughs> sorry basketball people um and so you know what i mean and they've got the you know the the basketball with the veil on it on the cake and, and the bow tie kind of thing right and it's just this whole cute thing but then one of them ends up having a leg injury and they're never able to play basketball again and so now the one thing that they had in common is completely gone and they don't get to share that time together You know, I I mean, you could, that's maybe not a perfect analogy because they could just watch the NBA together on TV if they still value that kind of thing, right? But like, when you get into an argument, you're not going to be able to hang on to each other just because you're both Raptors fans. Yeah. That's not going to be enough of a foundation. You, if you're, you're both Raptors fans, but you have completely diametrically opposed values in life. Right. It's me, it doesn't, so I, I think that you people, that people need to... Uh, really think about what their own values are and who they are and their character as a person before they meet someone. So that like you say, they're offering somebody like, I'm not saying you guys aren't people of quality. Don't get me wrong. We're not, we're not, we're not here bashing our audience, but like speaking for myself before I met Hannah, I know that I had to go through a time of improving who I was as a person, improving my character and, and, and trying to face some of the things about myself that were like not good traits and that's not to say that I've yeah. I've fixed all of those things. I yeah. still have plenty of flaws. It's just like starting the process where you come to the point where you need you you realize that you need to work on yourself, um, and you can't always rely on another person to fix you, um, or rely on the other person to give you like everything you need because that's not realistic. Yeah, because I think it's it's about it's like you know you know like that joke kind of like that meme where people say like he's a 10 but blah 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 or that kind of thing you know what i mean yeah. and 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 or like that thing or they are people like always make fun of this stereotype that um girls will only date tall guys right, right. and that kind of thing but like i think guys have unreasonable unreasonable standards oftentimes in dating um too and you know if if you like tall people who cares that's your thing i don't care that's i i'm not holding it against you yeah. um but like I feel like oftentimes it's like people are like, if they're honest with themselves, character wise, because looks are object are subjective, right? It doesn't really matter that everybody has a different opinion, but like character wise, they're a five, but they're only willing to look for a 10. It's like, you should go, you should try and be more than that. Yeah. If you want more than that. Right. Not to say like, oh, I'm a five, so I should look for a five. No, no, don't no, just like, it's like maybe just work on yeah. yourself. And, and But don't be so hard on yourself too, because some yeah. people can go the other way and they're just like, yeah. oh, I'm a five, I'll always be a five and no, yeah. no one's ever going to like me. And it's like, you know, it's it's just, a, we're all in a, we're all in growth. And, and these, he's a five, he's a 10, it's all meaningless. It doesn't mean anything anyway. So like, it's just a matter of us just uh, growing.